Where were you on D-Day? Sorry, I meant the real D-Day. The new decimal money will be with us on D-Day. Decimal Day. It's when the British finally decimalized their currency after dragging their feet for over a century. Decimalization means converting a currency into one that deals in powers of 10. It's universal by now. A dollar's worth 100 pennies, a pound 100 pence, the yen 100 sen, a Pinocchio 100 tomatoes. In fact, there's only two countries left who haven't done it, Mauritania and Madagascar. But even then, their primary currency units are worth so little that the smaller denominations are never used. The first country to go decimal was China, though Wikipedia disagrees with itself on that one. The first to go decimal in the West was certainly Russia in 1704. And after much of the Commonwealth and world decimalized, the UK finally bowed to the great power of 10 on February 15th, 1971. February because it's when retailers saw the least amount of traffic. 15th because South Africa and Australia had already done Valentine's Day and the UK thought it was a little too kitsch. Before D-Day, one pound was 20 shillings was 240 pence. It made for some ugly math. Whew. Sure, if you dealt with the daily, you got good. But on a world stage where pretty much every other country had decimalized, it was awkward for tourism and trade. New Zealand dropped pound for dollar, and Australia dropped pound for dollar, so the UK kept the pound. Because it's, well, the pound. A reserve currency. Everyone liked holding pounds. Except on their bodies. They did, however, drop the shilling, and they rolled out new coinage for the new conversion rate. One pound to 100 new pence. Given the reticence surrounding the euro, you can imagine not everyone was happy about D-Day. When I was a youngster, the world chased Great Britain. Now Great Britain's chasing the world. Why? Turns out LSD coinage was a carryover from the Roman times, and dropping the shilling felt like a cultural loss. People were also afraid greedy shop owners would take advantage on the day of conversion to secretly mark up prices. After all, 50 new pence was a higher price than 100 old pence. Animosities like this never die, and thanks to the internet, even today you can view an hour-long old coinage and anti-decimalization retrospective, complete with comments from people who apparently saw through the great societal con as schoolchildren. In the lead-up to D-Day, they injected new coins into the economy and started recalling shillings to inoculate against citizens' ignorance. The one old coin kept around was the beloved sixpence, thanks to public outcry. Of course, they also had something bigger up their sleeve to sway public opinion. A massive propagate marketing campaign. There were posters, pamphlets, training stamps, free decimal ladders, television commercials, short films, and yes, a record by entertainer Max Bygraves. Decimalization marketing campaigns had been done before, and a common element was the out-of-touch elder who needed a hip youth to educate them on new money. Using dollars and cents all over Australia. I get with it, you're not listening. Part of getting the public excited, or at least content with new currency, was the redesign, which for Australia was just an animal-based flex, in classic Australian fashion. According to government papers released much later, the people in charge of the design in the UK were most concerned about the prospect of Queen Elizabeth dying before they could release the new coins, all of which had her profile on one side. I think they were pretty safe on that one. Despite problems with vending machines and taxi meters, and those aforementioned one-off price hikes, UK's D-Day went over A-OK. -okay. Makes sense given all the attention it got. If it's super salient, people are going to watch their every move so as not to make a mistake. It's exactly what happened on H-Day, the day Sweden started driving on the right side of the road. The number of car accidents was actually down for a few weeks. In the end, old pence coinage circulated out of the economy much quicker than expected, and the advisory group set up to manage the transition shut down early. A small group of laymen blamed decimalization for the massive oil-related inflation in the 70s. But the deed was done, and in 1982, the word new was no longer being printed on UK coinage. If they give me my pension and this new money, I shall give it back to them. And if I starve, I shall write to the Queen.